I did not cry at the end of the Outer Wilds DLC, even though I wanted to. I wanted to understand and feel the inhabitants' sadness and grief. I wanted to mourn with them. I wanted their pain to convince me that their actions were reasonable. But I didn't. And I want to talk about it. Before I move on, this video will contain spoilers, obviously. If you haven't yet played the game, please do that or, I don't know, watch my playthrough of this channel. Shameless plug, you're welcome. You have been warned, so let's get into the video. For those of you who joined me on my journey, know that I enjoyed the base game immensely. And obviously the base game differed a lot from the DLC. Not only how the story was conveyed, but also how the species were presented. As where Dunamai had been a well-known species for our little hatchling with their ruins decorating every corner of the solar system, the Auks, or the Humus, as I kept calling them, did not. And this alone felt disconnected and a bit strange and it left me wanting to learn more than I was allowed to. I swear the sadness or the grief with the Nomai came with the interloper abruptly ending them on their journey as well as their unfortunate jump into Dark Bramble, losing several of their friends and their family. The Alks decided to end their journey by their own accord in the most fancy way ever after discovering the Ice intended existence. Granted the Nomai had not seen what the Alks had and that might be a very important factor to take into consideration. The Nomai had only seen the Ice existence. The Alks had not only seen it, but it had in fact seen the visions as well. I don't want to say that I don't understand both of their point of views, neither can I say that I would have acted any differently myself if I were in that situation. I can however point out why the Alks story doesn't make sense to me, and why I also disagree with some of the theories that's been flying around regarding their actions. First, I want to be clear in a couple of points before moving on, things that I believe affects this whole point point of view of mine. When we wake up under the stars for the very first time, we were dropped into a solar system with Nomai ruins and texts sprinkled all over. Our people back-engineered their technology, they were inspired by them, and we even found ways to translate their well-preserved language. We learned about what happened to them, how they got there, what they tried to achieve, and even delved into some light conflicts between individuals along their strife. We discovered everything through texts. Knowledge became our weapon, and the more knowledge we gathered about about their strive, the more we could explore and unravel. And along the way we realized that they experienced grief. Their lost ones, or in fact them being lost, not knowing what happened to the last pod, not knowing if they were able to leave the solar system, not knowing if they would die there. However, without any guidance, as the eyes stopped sending signals and they could not contact the other Nomai, they pushed on, they rebuilt, they moved forward and even planned for and appreciated the solar system and its upcoming inhabitants. It was very important to them to preserve and respect the nature around them as they wanted to leave the solar system intact. Obviously, this is a very important clue to how they did not know about the ice vision, as I mentioned before. The DLC was very different. It had to be. It was leaning on strong emotion and visual understanding. There were no individuals to speak of, just the Alks as a whole, their emotions, their reactions, their decision, a single-minded goal. Instead of trying to understand what had happened from an outside perspective and slowly letting their strife become our own like with the Nomai, we simply pushed forward out of curiosity and were met by fear, confusion and the opposite reaction of the Nomai. Putting the base game aside, I wish to speak a little bit about my reaction to the DLC as well as my reasoning for still feeling upset about it. But before I do, I want to celebrate it. This DLC did not only answer some of the questions I still had in my mind after finishing the base game, but it built upon the base game and added more depth to it. In fact, I would even want to argue that the whole scary bits of the DLC was a very vital point. For me personally, I got so scared that I stopped playing for a few days. I had gone from absolute fascination to absolute terror. But I pushed through my fears because I was determined to conquer them and find out what was on the other side. And honestly, I couldn't just stop either. I had people watching me. And for the purpose of the DLC, this part was important. Seeing through the fear, finding secret ways to get through it, or even just brute forcing the experience, pushing through it was 
was important. And while exploring their story, which was only conveyed to us through burnt imagery and reels, we learned the heartbreaking truth of how they destroyed their own home in pursuit of the eye. Finding out what the eye wanted, they reacted in pure grief and anger. They burned out all the mentionings of the eyes from every reel they had. They created a digital world or simulation to which they transferred the remaining knowledge from the reels and then burned the rest of them in the real world. They then entered a deep sleep, moving their minds to the simulation and stayed there. As if the existence of the stranger only served as a jarring reminder of what they had lost and was too painful to experience, as if the idea of starting anew somewhere else or finding a new planet in general was completely out of the question. As if this was the only answer. Throughout the DLC I asked one question more than once. What are they now? And this question haunted me. It was introduced to us very early on that the Alks possessed the ability to convey imagery of their minds. Not in written text, but almost as a video that played in your head. And they used the same technology to read the eye and seemingly to convey ideas and thoughts between each other. They did possess a written language, but if we are to look at all of their shelves filled to the brim with reels, I believe they preferred to communicate through imagery. As demonstrated by the prisoner, we could see both his minds and he could see ours. So it's not too far-fetched to think that they could also create a digital resting place for these images, in which they could transfer their entire mind and in fact exist. And I believe to this point it's all good, like entering a controlled dream. Instead of letting our mind wander and create the world around us, we have a pre-designed world and simply let the mind wander it instead of the other way around. But what are they now? What did they actually enter? with themselves their minds or something else one thing that's not explored enough in the dlc is to what extent the mind is converted and moved not once are we introduced to the idea that they are communicating with the complexity of a being but rather a screenshot of their ideas thoughts and feelings and as they seemingly managed to build this entire digital world, troubleshoot it and then enter it within one generation, remaining within their sense of fear and grief, it is possible that this was not part of any calculations of theirs. So what did they actually enter their digital world with and why did they choose to stay? There's this funny thing about anger and grief. They are both fueled by one common factor. Hope. Longing, wishful thinking, bargaining, it all comes down to hope. And through the entire stranger we can see hints of hope everywhere. Images and pictures of themselves and children, the burnt church, the blocked communication from the eye, hiding their resting place, even the confinement for the one person who thought differently. These are all signs of hope. Hoping no one else finds the eye, hoping and longing for their lost world, hoping that burning away all trace of the eye from their storybooks would change something. Even the sun panel that lets the stranger travel from one star to another once it's reached its end, it's all hope. And this was never fully explored further, but it had given me hope as well. They were so hell-bent on their solution that it inspired hope. And while playing the DLC, I was expecting some big reveals, some big conclusions to their ideas that had simply gone wrong, that they did not mean to die and wither away within the stranger, but that their system had simply failed them. But that was not the case. They chose to stay. They preferred their fake world. So to revisit the question, what are they now? A screenshot of an emotion, an image stuck in time where they were colored by fear and grief? Because this is the point where I can't agree with the DLC. Grief, sadness and fear, these are emotion that never remains forever in one single form. Organic living beings full of the strongest emotion in the universe is always, always moving forward. In time and in space. Not to get too philosophical, but I've always liked to think that we, as living organisms, are who we are because of three things. Memories, emotions and hope. And even emotions are simply reactions to our surroundings. Emotions are also fueled by memories and hope. The very last thing that leaves us when we pass from this world is hope. I mean, some speculate that love is the most pure and human emotion, but I would want to argue that hope is stronger, but that's beside the point. What I'm trying to say is that memories, emotions and even hope are what defines us and makes us individuals. We are experiencing grief and sadness differently and we're all on different journeys after, for example, a loss or having been hurt. But the 
the Alks work differently. They move as a unit with the same emotions, same journey, same minds. They saw the ice vision and as a unit decided what the best thing to do would be. Even throughout making that entire digital world, burning the reels, imprisoning the one individual who thought differently, they moved within one stream. This idea is made even stronger if you look at the towers in which their bodies resided. The body is dead. The green flame is lit, but they chose this. They could choose to wake up like the prisoner did, but they didn't. None of them had an individual thought to wake up and get some freaking food in their systems. And this is where it gets even more interesting to me. Because they moved with fear, they did not block the signal to spare others from destroying their own home world and get disappointed as well as some theories goes. No! They blocked it because they wanted to prevent the end from happening. Again, hope. They made their fake world block the signal and went to sleep. They preferred looking back than looking forward. Except for one individual, of course, and maybe this is what makes that even more significant. They converse through imagery, their ideas and experience and memories. I mean, when you hear someone tell you about that one amazing goal in football at the game they saw last night, you're like, oh yeah, cool, wow. But imagine if they could actually show you and even convey their own emotions surrounding it. It's not difficult to imagine how much more engaging that would be, so much so that you might even start cheering for the same team, even though you'd never watch football, because this is the power of emotions and imagery. This is why the DLC had to be scary. Had you forced into a corner where you had to take a step back and realize that you were fighting ghosts. Nothing real. Something stuck in cold that could get washed away by the water. Because in the end, that's all they were. A screenshot of a scared legion. And though that in itself is fodder for hope, they did not act hopeful only resentful. I could personally not get through the scary bits without my friend sitting right next to me, and that also gave fuel to the fire. When I was alone, I was scared and I could not move forward. When I had someone next to me, I felt brave and fought my way through. And this is where it all ties together. They were Legion, one mind, and as such, they were alone, even when they were many. The Nomai were individuals with many ideas and thoughts and emotions forced to communicate through a more primal means. But this is also very important and probably the one thing I want to take away from the DLC. We're scared when we're alone. We're afraid to move forward. We feed ourselves negative viewpoints in an echo chamber. We need others around us. Fear is not an emotion to avoid, but to overcome. And we need others around us to overcome them. The things that disproves my theory is the prisoner's reaction and one of the DLC endings. The prisoners reacted when we showed them what their actions had resulted in. I don't wish to color it happy or sad, it just was. And in one of the DLC endings in which you die and enter the digital world when the sun pludes, the end screen says that the inhabitants don't chase you anymore. These are both signs that the inhabitants were completely transferred as a being, since they were capable of change, and that they were influenced by another existence with different viewpoints in whose presence they overcame fear and accepted that we were there. Or, in fact, were aware that the solar system closest to the eye were no more, and that we wouldn't enter the eye anyway, so we were not a threat. But that would make me even more upset, because if they were capable of change, of moving forward, how long did it take them to accept their fate? Did they just die and let the stranger die with them? They were, as we know, capable of waking up as long as their bodies were alive. They did not even bother to wake up to nourish themselves. I mean, sure, get high on the dream, but tend to the vessel. If this was true, and they moved their entire being into this digital world, they did not attack me because they were scared, which was my initial thought. No, they accepted their fate and still carried resentment. They did not attack me because they were scared. They tried desperately to still protect their convictions of what they were doing was the right thing to do. Capable of change, but not to understand. Protecting the meaning of the I became their sole purpose. So no, I did not cry. 
I can cry for someone's misfortune, but I cannot cry for someone, Legion, so blinded by fear and conviction that they refused to listen to the one individual who dared to see further and stubbornly decided to construct a fancy way of giving up. I was full of hope that we, in the end, would stumble upon an answer. I myself read into their world. Me full of hope and pushing through the fear wanted the same things for the inhabitants. If you haven't seen my full playthrough of Out the Wilds in the DLC and you want to see me freak out in fear, it's available on my channel. But I genuinely feel that this DLC added so much to Out the Wilds and I wouldn't want to have it any other way. I loved the visual puzzles and to be able to explore the stranger. I got scared half to death, but I also feel like that was an important emotion to experience as it, for me, added to the complexity that emotions in fact are. Outer Wilds to me will always be the one game that changed my views on adventure games forever. Having grown so used to having a to-do list in any other adventure game and then to unlock some tool to get further, this game taught me that my mind was all I needed. And the ship log, come on, you know, you saw my playthrough, you know exactly what I mean. But it was also the one game that made me believe that I could actually do this whole YouTube thing. When I first uploaded, I only got a couple of views, most of which was my two friends and myself. But after about a week, it had been viewed by almost 300 people. And I got to experience this entire game with you guys, and I am eternally grateful for your non-spoiler approach and you sharing me on in the comments. So not only do I love this game because of the game itself, I love it because of you guys. And by the way, look at this painting I found of the prisoner. Holy sh**, they had some anger issues. But that's all I have to say about that. If you enjoyed this video, you might like the one being recommended on the screen now. Uh, love you guys and I see you next time. Bye!